there VT English for students I know that you guys are working uh, hard on Mr. Roberts project and one of those parts or components to his project is infographics so I've decided to give you some background and some information that you could use on your own infographics so let's take a look by the way I got this information mostly from the envisionup.com page uh, so let's get started. All right, so infographics. We're going to be looking at the elements and the design of good infographics. So what is an infographic? Well, they're visual representations of data presented in an easy to understand and fun to read format. It just really helps us when we helps our brains when we see something visually. So you first need to start with a story. What is your purpose or your message that you want to share in this infographic? Uh, All right, and then part of that is figuring out who your audience is because how you say your message is almost as important as what you say to your audience. All right, and then you have to decide: is your message relevant to them? And if it if it's not relevant, you need to change what you're going to say or change your audience. But it needs to be relevant or people aren't going to want to read it. So basically, first you start off with why are you telling your story? What is your message? All right, and of course, since it's an info graphic, then you need to come up with some information or data. So uh, good data makes good infographics. They need to be accurate they need to be credible how do you get credible uh, data well you either get you make your own research or you find a credible source having said that please cite your sources uncredited information is not only unethical plagiarism but it is untrustworthy so most readers won't won't believe it if they don't know where you got your information so it won't be persuasive so the data must tell your story and support your message. But make sure that it's credible and that you have cited your information. This is a good illustration of some data. All right. Now, yes, information, uh, infographic, excuse me, is writing. Not just data, not just graphics, but there's writing. All right. So what writing does in infographics is it provides a context for your data and it ties together your story with your message and your audience. So you need to grab people's attention. You need to use a big high headline at the top. Grab your attention of your audience. So you can do that with big fonts, colorful fonts, different things that'll catch the eyes. All right, then once you've got your data and you've got your message, then you need to start thinking about the design. All right, so you need to have a connection. Your, your design needs to be connected to your story, kind of like a theme. Uh, for example, if your, your message is about nature, then your design elements and color palette need to be colors from nature. For example, this one. It's got greens and a little bit of browns. Okay, so make sure that uh, your your theme and your your design match. All right, talking about colors, you need to have colors that are pleasing to the eye. You don't want to have clashing, harsh ones. Well, if harsh is your what effect you want, but you don't want them to clash or be unpleasing to the eye. So uh, make sure they go well together. For example this palette goes really well together okay now this example of an infographic has just like three colors and so uh, it's it's got a, a good design to it it's not clashing and they go well together and it's easy on the eyes all right, next one is uh, the writing needs to be in, in a font that's appropriate to the topic and the message in the audience. 
right? If you're writing to some stodgy old formal people, you don't want to use a, a font or style that's, um, you know, uh, basic or what's the word I'm talking about? Casual, that's the word I was looking for. Thank you. Uh, you need to pick ones that are legible in small sizes and large sizes because uh, sometimes your infographic will be blown up you know, to show on a poster or it might be on a little card. So just make sure that they, uh, they're they legible both in small and large sizes. Don't have more than two fonts. It's, it's too distracting and it just, that's the general rule. Don't have more than two. You can use all the different sizes you want, but just two different fonts. So this is an example of two fonts. All right, another one is you're, you're designing with a purpose. You want to have a, the a right balance of white space to color and graphics and everything. You don't want to have it too busy that it's hard to figure out what the message is. So organize your data. Visually guide your, your readers from the beginning to the end, whether it's by dotted lines or just a natural flow from beginning, middle to the end. But it's bal balance is critical. You need to balance your data, data, your words, and your design elements and your colors. Make sure you use white space. Here's an example of white space. All right, so let's talk about your graphs or charts. So you need to find uh, jaw-dropping data, but you need a creative way or a unique way to uh, represent it. Not your boring old sheets variety, just boring old bars or lines. If you can, find something that will really make it snap or pop. For example, if, it's, if your topic is about people, instead of having bars, have people's silhouettes like at, you, like at the top there. All right, but just make it creative, have fun with it. All right, so we've learned some things about infographics. Let's see what you think about this one. All right, so this one is, does it have a, a message? Social distancing, right? Uh, does it say where it's from? Osmosis.org, okay, so that's good. Uh, does it have too many colors? Is it distracting or is it okay? Right? It, are the fonts distracting or are they, they, it's an informal poster so the, the font is informal. So I think that does well. Uh, it does have more than three colors, but I don't think it does too terribly bad. What do you guys think? All right, this one is a representation of the different virus um, viruses over the, the years and the ages. Um, if this was a, a COVID focused one, you really have to search hard to find uh, COVID-19 and it's at the bottom. So uh, although, you know, the big ones in the middle and towards the top are, you know, they're cool looking, but the, it just really isn't very informative. At least it doesn't tell me if it is it is that have a title. Is it about? Is it saying something about the COVID nineteen? I mean, there's a lot of questions I have. All right, this one has good white space, so that's good. Doesn't have too many colors. It says where they got their information from. Good has some uh, some rules, so we know that we're supposed to start with rule number one on the left and end on rule number six on the right. So uh, I think it does pretty good. Uh, what do you, who do you think the audience is? Is it going to be kids? Is it going to be adults? Good things to think about. All right. Now this one only has the, the three colors. Light blue, dark blue, black, and lots of white space. So that's good. It has source, I think. Yeah, UNESCO. It has a legend. Has uh, doesn't have a lot of text, but it has enough to let you know it's about COVID and it's about students having to stay home. So not too bad. All right. Well, hopefully this will help you with the infographic uh, section of your uh, project you're doing for Mr. Roberts. Hopefully this was helpful. Have a good one.